Hey everyone. In this episode, we continue our Traffic Signals Principle Series. We'll be starting to look at different modes of operation that traffic signal controllers operate under and how these modes interact with each other. Then we'll be looking at manual, fixed time and vehicle actuated modes specifically. If you've missed the previous episodes in this series, go to the At ITS Now YouTube page and look out for the orange tabs on the video page. Anyway, I'm Alastair and this is At ITS Now. Traffic signal controllers have the capability to operate under a number of different modes, often referred to as methods of control. The actual modes available on a particular junction will be dependent upon the facilities programmed into the site configuration and may be activated for a number of reasons, including routine switching caused by timetable entries or in response to a failure occurring or input from an external stimulus. Mode priority. The different modes are usually programmed in a hierarchy of control in the mode priority table of the traffic signal controller configuration. A typical example of these is shown here. In this example, the normal mode of operation wouldn't be mode one which is the highest pri priority. It would actually be mode three, UTC, urban traffic control. This would allow the traffic signal controller to operate with the benefit of UTC capabilities, but to be overridden if either mode two, manual, if this is an initiated on site, or if mode one, hurry call, which is an external input to the traffic signal controller, is required. The lower priority modes, four to six, are typically provided for resilience. So for example, if UTC fails, such as might happen if the communications link required goes down, then an alternative mode will operate instead. In this example, the traffic signal controller would normally fall back to mode five, cableless linking facility, CLF which will allow the site to stay coordinated with other signalised junctions in the vicinity. However, if the CLF plans were not set in the timetable, the traffic signal controller would then fall back to mode six, which in this example is fixed time. The traffic signal controller may also use timetable entries to introduce or remove certain modes of operation. This allows further flexibility to be achieved by operating the traffic signal controller differently during particular periods. Although the synchronization of adjacent traffic signal sites provides significant benefits during periods of higher demand, as typically experienced during the AM and PM peak periods, the imposition of coordinated operation during quieter periods may result in vehicles and pedestrians having to wait at signals unnecessarily just to retain this offset linking for traffic flows to the subsequent set of signals. In these situations, consideration should therefore be made to drop from coordinated methods of control to isolated vehicle actuated modes when it is appropriate to do so. Manual mode, MAN for short. Manual is the simplest form of control. It is provided to allow an engineer or police officer to manually control the traffic signal controller in exceptional circumstances, such as during commissioning or in an incident. A control panel, sometimes referred to as the police panel, 
is situated behind a small lock door on the outside of the traffic signal controller cabinet. The lock provided in the door usually uses a standard 900 key, allowing competent personnel access to the facility, but without access to the rest of the cabinet, which requires additional keys to open. The panel is provided with switches to allow stages, which have been pre-programmed in the controller configuration, to be selected. In single stream sites, the numbered buttons will normally refer directly to the stage numbers. But in multi-stream implementations, each button will normally select a combination of stages in each stream. In addition, a switch to select all red, which stops all traffic, a signal on off switch and mode selection switches are included. Indicators, indicators to show which stages are currently running and the mode of operation are also located on the panel. The door of the panel is equipped with a sensor to notify the TSC when the door is open. The door state can be automatically reported to the UTC center and will also override manual mode if the door is closed. Although manual mode is normally always available, certain authorities have policies regarding the facility that require validation prior to access to the mode being granted. This may require phoning the UTC center for the mode to be enabled remotely this is usually by having UTC as a higher priority in the mode priority table and then disabling UTC from their end to allow manual to be selected. Or the entry of a password via the engineer's handset port. To assist those using manual mode, it can be helpful if a stage diagram is provided on the inside of the manual panel door. Although this isn't usually very large, so it can be difficult to fit all the relevant information for more complex multi-stream sites. Fixed time mode. Fixed time operation cycles around the program stages in a preset order. Each stage will appear for a predefined period, regardless of whether there is any demand from traffic on the relevant phases. It should be noted that modern traffic signal controllers do have a facility to make phases demand dependent within fixed time operation. This can be useful in situations where a phase is not heavily used, such as a quiet side street approach or a pedestrian phase, which would cause unwarranted traffic congestion on opposing phases if they were to run when not required. The stage appearance time is governed by the constituent phase maxima timings and will run for the longest period available in each stage. Remember, you can have multiple phases within stages. Controllers can be programmed with more than one value of maximum timer for each phase. These are grouped into sets of values which can be selected by time of day and day of week criteria set up in the traffic signal controller's timetable. The different timings allow for differences in traffic flow to be accommodated, i.e. morning and evening peak periods, weekday interpeak, overnight, weekends, etc. Fixed time operation works best when a junction is running near to its capacity, but will introduce delays to traffic when it is quieter and will not be synchronized with adjacent junctions. Fixed time benefits from the fact that a minimum of detection equipment is required for this mode of operation. Remember to hit subscribe for ITS now. Vehicle actuated mode, referred to as VA. To overcome the lack of flexibility that fixed time operation suffers from, VA enables the traffic signal controller to be responsive to traffic as it presents itself at the junction. VA utilizes detection equipment, such as inductive loops or above ground detectors, to ascertain the presence of traffic around the junction. 
When no demands exist, the traffic signal controller will revert to its quiescent stage. Traditionally, this was what is known as the main road stage. But increasingly, this may be to a pedestrian or all red stage until a subsequent demand is received. When traffic approaches the junction, demands from the relevant detection equipment will be received by the controller. This will then process these demands, moving from stage to stage in a responsive manner. These movements will be serviced in the cyclic order defined in the stage sequence, but will allow stages to be missed out if there are no demands for the constituent phases within them. Each stage that appears will run for a duration equivalent to the minimum green period of the constituent phases. On completion of the minimum green period, the stage will either terminate or continue to operate if demands for constituent phases persist. As vehicles are detected whilst the associated phase is active, an extension time will be added to the green period, typically one and a half seconds for system D loops. In this vehicle activated example, during the cycle of the stages, we'll look at how the phase timings work in response to detection demand and extension inputs. We start whilst the site is in the quiescent stage on the main road because there are no demands or extensions present. While still in the quiescent state, a car approaches the junction on the side road. Note that there are still no vehicles on the main road. As the car passes over the first loop, it inserts a latch demand for the associated phase. A latch demand remains until that phase goes green. Although the car will be detected as it runs over the subsequent loops in the approach, the latch demand will remain in place. As the demand matures, we see the main road phase start to lift, displaying the leaving amber. When this occurs, will be dependent on the factors such as the main road minimum phase timers having expired. Full vehicular phases usually have a second, second, seven second minimum timer to ensure that their green period stays illuminated for a guaranteed minimum period. The side road starting amber period is then followed by the phase displaying the green. Then the car can proceed through the junction. Whilst the side road is still running its minimum green, vehicles approach the junction on the main road. These then insert a demand for their associated phase as they pass over the X loop. But before the side road minimum timer expires, a subsequent vehicle inserts an extension for that phase as it passes over the first loop on that approach. As I said earlier, VA loops normally insert a one and a half second extension. This provides sufficient time for a vehicle traveling at around 30 miles, or, uh, miles an hour or so to reach the next loop before the extension timer runs out. It then inserts another extension as it travels over the subsequent loops.
which allow it to travel through the stop line and then clear the junction. As the extension terminates, the side road then gaps out to allow the main road demand to be serviced. The intergreen period between the two phases ensures that the vehicle from the side road clears the junction prior to the new vehicles on the main road starting to flow. So to recap, in VA, a stage operates until one of the following conditions occurs. In the event that no subsequent vehicles are detected during the preceding extension period, the traffic signal controller will gap out and revert back to the quiescent stage if no other demands exist. Or on receipt of demands for phases in alternative stages, whilst phases in the current stage are being extended, will result in starting the maximum green timers of the current stage constituent phases. When this happens, the current stage will continue to operate for as long as its constituent phases continue to be extended, up until the point when the maximum timers terminate. At this time, the stage will finish and the other stages will be serviced as required. If a phase extension is still active when that maximum green timer terminates, a revertive demand for that phase will be inserted to ensure that the phase reappears to guarantee that there aren't any vehicles trapped between the system DZ loop and the stop line. VA offers a responsive, flexible operation. However, in urban areas, it suffers from a lack of coordination between adjacent junctions. The lack of coordination can result in traffic congestion being caused when busier. So in this episode, we've seen the hierarchy of control and the way in which manual, fixed time and vehicle actuated modes work. In the next Traffic Signals Principles episode, we'll cover other operational modes. So look out for more Orange Tab issues soon. To find out more about the areas we've covered in this episode and the rest of the series, make sure to have a look at my books, Traffic Signals, which is an introduction to the subject, and Traffic Control, which goes into more depth. Both of these are available from Amazon or look on itsnow.org for more details and links. And lastly, could I please ask you to subscribe to our channel? It really does help us to bring you further videos about ITS. Thank you again to everyone who has subscribed. Thanks for watching. See you next time.